Welcome to week one of differential equations. In this week, we're going to introduce the idea of a differential equation, review some integration techniques, which will obviously be involved with working backwards from derivatives, and learn some techniques for solving first order differential equations, specifically the technique of separation of variables. To start though, it makes sense to look at the question of why. Why do we study differential equations at all? The answer is because in applied mathematics, differential equations are fantastic for modeling real world problems. There's an amazing array of applications where the mathematics naturally falls out as a differential equation. We can see some quick examples of this. If we look at the rate of which water is leaking from a tank, or another example would be a burette in chemistry class, it turns out if you look at the physics of it, and the pressure and gravity, all those kinds of elements, you end up arriving at Torricelli's law, which says that the rate at which water is leaking from a tank is proportional to the square root of volume of water in the tank. Now the key thing here is the rate. As soon as we see something about a rate, we're talking about a derivative. More precisely, the rate at which water is leaking from the tank that would be the derivative of volume with respect to time. How much water is leaking? Well, or we'd be talking about liters per minute or liters per second. And so we naturally arrive at some element involving a derivative. Now the next step is just to complete the sentence. The rate at which the water is leaking from the tank, well that's dv dt, is proportional to, and that translates to, equals a constant times. This is the mathematical translation. The mathematical translation of the phrase is proportional to, is equal to a constant times, and then it's right here in the, in the English expression here, is proportional to the square root of the volume of water in the tank. So the square root of the volume, which would be V. So we would have to be a little more careful here and divine V define V as the volume of water in the tank. But once we do that, we're good to go. And that gives us a differential equation. Notice it's an equation, check. And one of the ingredients is that it has a derivative in it. There's some more subtle things we'll look at later and we just categorize them, but that's a key ingredient for the differential equations we're gonna be looking at in this class. What we're looking for, or it's worth stating right now, that the goal would be to find V as a function of time. So this would be, in some sense, the rule that governs how water flows out of the tank but if we wanted to ask questions like, how long will it take to empty? This rule won't tell us that. We'll have to do some work to get to there. We'll save that for a bit later. For now, let's take a look at a couple of other examples of this idea of translating some kind of law into mathematical notation and seeing how naturally it arises as a differential equation. Here's one that discusses the idea of a rumor spreading. And so we've got a rate again. So there's our derivative. And it spreads at a rate proportional to, and that's a very common theme as well in differential equations, so it's proportional to the product of the people who have heard the rumor and those who have not. So let's be clear here. We've got two elements and a product, the people who have heard the rumor and those who have not. So this time let's start by defining our variables and let P equal the number of people who have heard the rumor. And let's let uh, those who have not, let's call that uh, Q. With those two elements, what we'd imagine is the rate of the rumor spreading being a rate that involves these quantities. Let's get the other side of the equation first though, because it's more straightforward, is proportional to 
is equal to a constant times the product of the people who have heard it, well that's p, and the product means multiplication, the number who have not is q, and there we have this right hand side of the equation representing the last part of the sentence. If we're talking about the rate at which a rumor spreads, well what do we mean by that? We mean that the number of people who have heard the rumor goes up, and right away we get our rate, dp dt, the rate at which people are hearing it every day is going to be proportional to a constant times the product of these two quantities here. Now this is a little sketchy because the derivative involves p and t, and we have this mystery value q. But if we look at a population, everybody falls into one of two camps, people who have heard and people who have not heard it. So what we might introduce is a third variable, which would be the total number of people. And that's different from the other two. This is varying with time. Both of these variables change with time, whereas the total number of people, at least in principle, is roughly constant. And because we can separate the total population into these two elements here, what we could do is rewrite our equation as the constant times the number of people who have heard the rumor, and the number of people who haven't is simply n minus p. Either if you haven't heard the rumor, then you're in q, and the number of people there is the total population minus the ones who have heard it. And that again is a differential equation based on the population p, which is the number of people who have heard the rumor. Once we have this differential equation, our goal would be that, to find the value of p as a function of time. In other words, how long does it take for the population of people who've heard the rumor to get past 50%? Or what is the shape to, when's the rate of increase highest? Things like that would come from finding that solution. As a last example to get us started, let's take a look at this example from physics. As a meteorite plummets towards the Earth, so we have the Earth and we have some kind of meteorite falling in, the acceleration is inversely proportional to the square of its distance from the center of the Earth. So we have some kind of distance here. We could call that r. So that distance would be the distance that's involved in this equation here. We have something a little different here. We have an inversely proportional to, but that has the same structure, is equal to a constant times, the inverse simply means one over the square of its distance. So we have inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Well, that would be r squared. Last but not least, we have the acceleration written here. So we get an equation with acceleration and the distance squared. But what we'd have to remember here is that acceleration is just the second derivative with respect to time of position or height, or in our case, that's also equivalent to the distance from the center. So our new equation here is that the second derivative of the distance is going to be proportional to one over r squared, or we also say inversely proportional to r squared. And again, that's a perfectly reasonable equation, it has an equality, but we're equating the derivative, second derivative here, back to the original variable r, and that would be the rule that governs how this object is going to fall over time. What we get from this is that simple statements about rates, which are defensible by laws of physics and laws of uh, exchange in case of the rumors, it's really, really easy to write out or come up with statements that define differential equations. The challenge, and basically what we're going to spend the entirety of the course on, is working from that differential equation to some kind of prediction about what is going to actually occur afterwards. So we're going to start with that equation and then ask, how can we use that to make a prediction about the future?